Hey everyone, so I have been trying to take on more big and challenging projects to push both Maslow and Abundance, our 3D modeling software, to their limits and figure out what we need to do to make both of them better. And the next project in that series is going to be this. It's a sauna on a trailer. The idea behind this project is that here in the Pacific Northwest we're known for rainy weather and beautiful nature. And so to make it easier to enjoy the beautiful nature, uh, it's really nice to have somewhere warm, so after kayaking or after um, you know, going hiking or camping, it's really nice to have a warm space to come back to. So this is a mobile sauna that can go out to the nature with you. The, that being said, I don't claim to know a lot about making saunas. The number one goal of this project uh, is first and foremost to push Maslow to its limits and push Abundance to its limits and learn what we can to make those systems better. Uh, the way this is designed is primarily to be something that I wouldn't even consider doing by hand. So this is hundreds of pieces and they're all these curved shapes that then have like a sinusoidal pattern cut into the side. And it's not even just a circle, it wraps around and then kind of curves out. It's not something I would want to do by hand. Uh, it's very computationally intensive to render all these parts and then also it takes a lot of um, you know, CNC to, to cut all these parts out. It's been a really great experience. I've learned a lot. And here's how the build process has gone so far. So the first part was I just had to cut a whole bunch of these pieces. Uh, each one of these sheets of plywood holds enough parts for two rings and we need nine rings in total. So we cut a bunch of these. And it really let me push how close I could get things to the edge of the sheets. So that was a great experience. One thing that didn't go well is these came out way too thin, but I went and found a workaround for that. I, when I went to cut these long runners that will join everything together, I tried to cut them with a shared edge so I'd only have to do half as much cutting, and that didn't work very well. The parts kind of broke free and flopped around, and it was an interesting experiment. I think there's ways I can do that better next time. With the parts cut out, I laid them out on the floor, and each ring is composed of two layers. The seams don't overlap and the layers are glued and then nailed together. This is what the process of cutting out one sheet looks like, which was about 45 minutes of cutting. You can see here that the machine is pausing for about 20 seconds between each path. That was actually a bug in the G-code generation process that got fixed as part of this test. It was really satisfying to be able to free up my space for assembly. Basically, I didn't have enough space to do cutting and assembling at the same time. So when I was done using the machine, I could just pack it away and use that same floor space to do the actual assembling and laying parts out. And the two layers are joined with just regular wood glue and then brad nails to hold everything in place while the glue dries. Here you can see me looking at the CAD model to try to figure out where each part goes. The front and back walls are a little bit different. Those have the shiplap cedar, and so what I'm doing here is I'm using a jigsaw to roughly cut these parts to the right shape, and then we'll use a trim router to make them exactly the shape we need later. I realized I messed up at this point. The ring that holds the plexiglass uh, dome on is supposed to have six holes in it that are evenly spaced around the circumference, and I forgot to add those. And so at first I was trying to figure out how to do that by hand, and then I realized that I could just CNC a template out of some scrap wood here, and this worked great. So I just cut this template out, and then I used it to mark where each of those holes should be drilled. I'm really pleased with how that came together. Once the holes were marked, it was just a process of very carefully drilling each hole, which was a little bit terrifying, but it went great. When it came time to stand up the rings on the trailer, I used these angle brackets to hold everything in place. Something I'd design a little bit differently next time is that basically all of the rings go up and then there's these runners that come together that lock everything in place. And it looks great on the CAD model, but it sort of has to happen all at once which is a little bit of a chicken and the egg problem. And so here you can see I'm using the runners to get the spacing right, and then I'm using some temporary lath to hold everything in place. And that allowed us to bring the parts in one at a time. 
At this point, I realized I messed up and I actually built this end wall backwards. It's the mirror image of what it should be. It's not symmetrical. It should be, but it's, you know, if I designed it again, it would be, but it's not symmetrical. And so I had to take it apart, flip it around, and then put it back together, which actually didn't end up being too much of a problem. And now I'm adding those runners that lock everything into place. Basically, I'm removing the temporary lath that's holding things and then adding the final runners. It ended up not being too big of an issue, but if I was designing it again, I would come up with a better assembly system so that I could do this step. I wouldn't need the temporary lath to hold things in place until the runners come in. And here's how it finally looked. I'm really pleased with how this all looks. I I'm a little bit bummed that all this cool complexity is going to be hidden inside the walls. You're not going to see it in the final thing, but I'll know it's there. When it came time to cut that door, I 3D printed a little router bushing that goes on my router. And basically I wanted to offset to the inside of this door frame a little bit, just so when the door is closed, there's no gap. And that worked really well. There were a couple places I couldn't reach with the router from the outside, so I did them from the inside, and then I used the oscillating multi-tool just to clean up this last little bit. Some things we've learned from the build process so far. I definitely pushed the limits in terms of how much stuff I could fit on a sheet, which was a really good experience. Uh, I also, one big takeaway from this process has been that I'd like to incorporate into Abundance and Maslow some sort of automatic labeling system because when you have hundreds of parts, uh, it can be really hard to tell them apart. Luckily, a lot of these are indexed with the, where the runners join them. There's a little notch and getting those notches in combination with the bump sort of helps distinguish the parts. But these final circles that don't have any notches in them, after I cut those out, it was almost impossible to tell them apart which ones were which, and if they were reversed, because they, they can be, you know, mirror image. Um, so I'd love to, if I'm going to be doing even more big and complicated things than this, have a system for automatically labeling the parts as they come off the machine to make assembly easier. Uh, we also worked a lot because of this project on abundance in terms of enabling multiple threads to do computation. So when we're rendering bigger things like this, um, it makes them go a lot faster, which that's really exciting. And yeah, generally this has been a great project for pushing forward all of our systems and how they work together and making them better.